Today's video is a quick follow-up to the video I did yesterday on the Fenerzi LC1020E. It would appear that there is a firmware update available for the LCR meter. So in this video I'm going to install that firmware and see if it fixes any of the issues that I had with the meter. So if you want to see me update the firmware on this, then this is the video for you. So we'll start by going to Fenerzi's website. I believe it's Fenerzi.com. Appears to be. Uh, downloads. Manuals and firmwares. Uh, you guys can probably see that I'm still using Windows 10. Um, the PC I use for this isn't actually compatible with Windows 11 um, and I don't really want to be forced into updating to uh, updating my PC or to or updating illegally to Windows 11 so I just wonder what you guys feel about that if you could comment in the description um, what we feel about being forced to uh, abandon perfectly good hardware that kind of thing Okay, so we've got the meter here. There's the manual available for download. Here's the firmware version 1.1, it's the latest. So let's just download that. Have a quick look. So it's got an update log. So what's it fixed? Pass alarm. Only lights up green and beeps once when the measurement is qualified. Yeah, that's what I noticed. You'll see that in the video. Change the power on off mode to long press. So it doesn't say anything about the fact that it doesn't display the correct value when you change the range. So at the moment, everything is in ohms or k ohms, even if you're in capacitance or inductance mode and also for me I would like to be able to lock the secondary display to anything that I choose and not have that zip around with the auto ranging function but in my opinion you should be able to lock that to whichever um, second secondary parameter that you want so it doesn't look like those two have been addressed in the uh, in the update log we'll put the new firmware in and see if any of those things have been changed and then we'll, and we can also check to make sure that the um, sorting mode is actually working as as it should do. Okay, so according to the manual, to do the firmware upgrade, we need to put the device into bootloader mode, um, connect it to the computer, and then copy the file, and then reboot. So let's go ahead and do that. So to go into bootloader mode. It says we have to press the up arrow button and hold that and then press the power button. When the screen shows bootloader, it means the device has entered firmware upgrade mode. Then we connect it to the computer. Um, the, it will come up as a drive in the computer and then we just copy the zip file onto the device. Or we'll actually drag the .bin file onto the device. So let's go ahead and do that. So bootloader mode, it said press up and hold and turn the power on. And it does indeed enter bootloader mode. So I'll now go ahead and connect that with the cable to my PC. Yep, device recognized. Yes, it has. Okay, so now it's just a matter of copying the phone onto there. Device has disappeared. Um, 
um, I assume that I have to power the device back on again. Yes. Oh, it's asking me the language at the start up. That's a bit different. Right. Okay, so it appears to be working so far. So let me, let's put the test jig in. Um, I don't know if I made this clear yesterday on the video. I really can't remember, but when you push this guy in, uh, you do have to push it slightly, just slightly to the right. And that just locks it in. I don't know if I made that clear. Right, let me go and get a resistor. So this should be a 10k resistor. Yes, it is. That's good. Um, and let's just quickly grab the capacitor. Okay, so I've got the test frequency on one gigahertz, the bias at 0 0.5 volts. And we'll connect this capacitor, it's a 470 microfarad. So it's measuring 425, which is fair enough. Okay, so that seems to work. Um, now, oh, let's just change the range to manual range. Yeah, so it's still saying ohms for that. Yeah, so if it's for so for example, I've pressed the um, the range button three times, and as you says, ten kilo ohms in the display. Uh, it's obviously out of range now for the capacitor because the measurement has disappeared. Um, but that should obviously say a value in um, farads or microfarads. So that hasn't been updated. Then let's go to. Um, Let's go back to auto on that and we'll change that to ohms. So yeah, again, that just instantly, as soon as I disconnect it, goes back to dissipation factor. I'd like to stay that in the range that I've actually set it to personally. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Um, anyhow, let's try the other function, which is the The sorting function so it still has got my 10k in there so let's connect the resistor okay so it's actually a pass but it's come up as a fail still doesn't really seem to be working. Let me just check to make sure it has actually done the firmware upgrade. Version 1.1, 1 .1, yes it has. Let's just try powering it off again. Disconnect the charger. Power on. Uh, let's actually try setting the, so we've got the, um, no good warning, let's turn, let's turn that on. Let's turn the volume on. And let's just put the tolerance as 10%, oops. Go into base mode, so both the counts are zero. We've got it set for 10k. Just hold that one on so it's tight. Aha! Okay. Oh, 
Right, let's try putting the tolerance back down to 5%. working I just want to turn the buzzer off yes Okay, that does in fact appear to be working now, so maybe I had to reboot the um, the meter again. So that does in fact appear to be working. So the firmware update has done exactly what it said it would do. Power off is now... I don't notice that being any different, to be honest, to how it was before. Um, so I don't know. But anyway, the count function, the sorting function is now working as it says in the book. So let's hope or from my from my side anyway I hope that they fix the um the range value when you select manual range so I'm in capacity mode capacitance mode and it's still saying ohms in here and even if I go to inductance mode it still says ohms in the display when I do manual range in so that definitely needs to be fixed and uh, as I've said, I would like to at least to be able to fix that, if, even if I have to press and hold it or, or something, I'd like to be able to lock that in so it doesn't auto range. Because it hasn't actually got an auto range function on it. Um, so I don't see why that, that would auto range unless you ask it to. That's my opinion. Comments in the comments section. And yeah, so that's just a quick video, firmware upgrade. Um, and to see what it does. So if you enjoyed that one, please subscribe to the channel. Um, leave any comments in the comment section that you feel. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.